In section 11.3, we're going to work with means again, but this time we're going to be working with two independent means, which is different from section 11.2 because these are going to be independent, not dependent. Um, again, there's our stack crunch main path right there, but as we saw in chapter 10, we'll have to make a choice between data or summary depending on if we have the raw data in our stack crunch spreadsheet or not. All right, let's look at the requirements as well because they're a little bit more extensive. The new piece for chapter 11 that we haven't had before is right here. Right, that's the new piece. But we've had random before. And then this is the whole, there's two separate groups measured once. That's this group, separate groups, just like in 11.1. It's just this will be working with quantitative data as opposed to qualitative data which was section 11.1. We're working with means now and not proportions. And then we have to do the independent of the population twice. Once for group one and once for group two. And then we have to do normal twice if we have to do it from um, greater than 30, but they will also give us two graphs if we're having to do it from the graph. So they have to be graphs, plural, right? There have to be two of them. And then also as an 11-1, there's no numbers here. It's not set equal to anything. It's that group one is equal to group two, right? Now remember, we've seen this before, but that really means that the null hypothesis is that group one's mean minus group two's mean is equal to zero, right? That is the null hypothesis for this chapter in general. We're assuming that there's no difference in the groups or no difference in the before versus the after, depending on which section we're in. Sometimes we'll write it like this, but I will tell you StatCrunch tends to write it like that. A lot of computer programs do. Speaking of computer programs, we are not going to be doing that formula by hand. No, no, no. We are going to use technology to do it. And then steps four, five, and six should be looking very familiar at this point. Same steps four, five, and six as always. All right, so let's look at an example. Here we go. So we want to test Sorry, we want to test whether there is a difference in the body temperature of men and women. So we collect a sample of 65 men, or excuse me, 65 women and 65 men, and take their temperatures. The study summary statistics are shown in the table below. All right, so we have different sample sizes, we have different sample means, and we have different sample standard deviations. And then we have our two groups. So we've decided which is group one and which is group two here. So the first thing we're going to do is verify our conditions. So before I go do that, actually, let me just kind of make a note here. These are N's, sample size stands for number. These are X bar, right? X bar, not D bar, right? D bar was for section 11.2 because there was a difference row and we were doing everything on that difference row. These are X bars, these are two separate groups. And these are S's, standard deviation. Standard, S stands for sample standard deviation, X bar stands for sample mean. All right, let's look at the requirements that we need and the conditions, same thing, conditions, requirements, tomato, tomato, right? So we're gonna look right here. So we need random. So we're gonna start with that. Number one, random is given, right? It said right here, it was a random sample, done everybody's favorite. <laughs> All right, so let's do step two right here. Independent samples. Well, that's yes also, because these are two separate groups. They're men and women. Women and men. Measured once. period. All right, step three, we need independent of the population. Okay, so this we're going to have to do twice. So we need that the N1, um, I'm going to make the women pink here. So N1 has to be less than 0.05 of capital N1. Little N1 is right here, right? This is N1. 
it's 65. So 65 is less than 0.05. Capital N1, this is women's body temperature. So this is all women. Right? We don't have a particular number given to us. We just know that it's all women. I'm segmenting this off because I'm going to need to do this again for the next one. All right, so then for the men, let me do them right here in kind of a baby blue. N2 is 65, so N2 needs to be less than 0.05, capital N2, less than or equal to. And again, it's 65, right? It's less than or equal to 0.05 of all men. We don't know what the numbers are, but both of these are yes, of course, right? So yes, of course. We never bother to find the calculations because we don't know how many people there are, but there are billions of men and billions of women in the world, so we're good. <laughs> Next, normal. Okay, well, normal's gonna be a yes. It'll be our fourth yes, because we need four yeses to proceed. And then for this one, we need that N1 is bigger than 30 and N2 is bigger than 30. Well, we have that, right? So N1, is 65 and 65 is bigger than 30 and n2 is 65 also and that's bigger than 30 so huzzah we're good we have four yeses we can proceed all right so let's run the test so these hypothesis tests what's really nice about both section well all of chapter 11 really is that the hypotheses are very set in stone it's that the group one is equal to the group two that's it, right? Now you can write that with the numbers one and two, or you can write it with W for women, which is the way I'm gonna write it, and M for men, right? You can, again, if you want to, you could write zero, a one and two. That's fine also. But the problem with one and two is that it doesn't really give you a clear indication of you know which group was which or whatever. So by writing W's and M's, then I keep it a little clearer for myself. Now, which direction are we going here? Because I know it's going to be mu m over here. It's just a question of which way am I going. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to read the word. There's a difference. Now, difference is not equal to. So this is a not equal to problem. Now, I will tell you that there's another way to write these. So let me just put this over here. You could also write it mu women minus mu men equals zero. Mu women minus mu men is not equal to zero. Right? Both of those are perfectly valid. Um, computers, this tends to be the one stat crunch writes. This tends to be the one we write. They both mean the same thing. All right, step two, alpha. Everybody loves that step because alpha is always given in the problem. It tells us that it's 0 0.05. Step three, T0. Well, remind yourself, there's a yucky, yucky formula, but we're not going to do it. We're just going to use technology. And technology is stat, T stat, two sample. I don't have raw data here, so I'm going to have to do with summary. So let me grab stat crunch. So here I am at StatCrunch. There's no columns of data. I don't have 65 numbers here. So I'm going to have to do stat, t stat, two sample, because these are two separate groups, with summary. I don't have raw data. So let me click with summary. And then I have to type in the values I have. So group one was the women. So that was 98.394, 0 0.743, and the sample size was 65, right? So X bar, S, and N, and then I'm going to do it for the men. 98.105, 0 0.699, and 65 for the men as well. They don't have to be the same, by the way. This one just was. And now we're running a hypothesis test. See, StatCrunch writes it as mu1 minus mu2 equals 0, and mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to 0, which is exactly what we want. We wanted that. Oops, let me click there. And then we want to make sure we click the p-value plot because that's how we're going to get step four done for us. And so we say compute. 
And this is all well and good, but honestly, the picture has everything we need because you can see the T stat. The T stat is 2.284. It says it right there at the top. And then we can see our picture. So we are going to draw our normal curve and we're going to label the picture that we see. So let me go back to my screen so you can see. So it's negative T0. Technically, it's the absolute value of T0, which is negative 2.284. And then the same spot on the other side, positive T0. Technically, it's absolute values. You don't have to put the absolute value symbols, but they're, they're technically more correct to do so. You can see that on the two-tailed test, they're there when they're not there for the other ones because the other ones are obvious. So I just throw them in. But if you don't put the little vertical bars in there, it's not the end of the world. OK, and then we shade these tails. And then we say the p-value. Now, the way two-valued or to me, two-tailed tests work is you have to write the p-value up at the top and do a double-pointed arrow to both sides, just like I do in the packet here. Right? It has to be like that. All right, so let me go grab that p-value again because I don't remember what it was. 0 0.024. Okay. 0 0.024. Done. There's step three. There's step four. We get those from StatCrunch. So I'm just going to make a little note. StatCrunch. Um, I'll say stat crunch. Let me just write it that way. And then you can go grab the table to know which ones to do. All right. And then just like in chapter 10 and 11, 1 and 11, 2, that p value, we have to compare it. That p-value is 0 0.024, and our alpha was 0 0.05. So that p-value, 0 0.02, is smaller than 0 0.05. So that means we are going to reject HO. So there is significant difference, or sufficient evidence. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that there is a significant difference. <laughs> sufficient evidence to support the claim that. And remember, you want to look for the words up at the top for where that claim is. There is a difference. Look for those different words, the greater thans, the less thans, the difference. That'll be your claim, right? So you can see the claims kind of hiding in here. Um, let me highlight it in red. There is a difference in the body temperature of men and women, right there. That's it. That's the claim. Right? That's your H1. All right, so I'm going to write that down here. There is a um, difference. Technically, it's a statistically significant difference in the body temperature of men and women. It's not saying how much it is, it's just saying that there is a difference. And again, we don't know it, but we have a sufficient evidence to support it.